Well, howdy and welcome into another edition of the Big 12 Breakdown. Sports Director Curtis Quillen alongside the voice of the Bears, John Morris. John, did you get some sleep with a little bit of a layoff finally? Kind of nice. You know, it's a it's a hard turnaround from Saturday to Monday. But then after Monday, and it was a late night Monday, because believe me, after that game, I was wired. I couldn't go to sleep. But after that, then you can kind of breathe a little bit. And and nobody cares about me being able to breathe. But for the, the team, they got two whole days off, Tuesday and Wednesday off practice. So back at it and getting ready for Arkansas on Saturday. Um, as we continue this, you, you guys notice the, the ears at the bottom of the screen. I've got some contractors doing some work at the house right now. It's why the background's a little bit different. I had to move into the dining room for this. But the dog, uh, Jolene, uh, my wife has had her since before we met. Um, likes to be part of uh, every podcast that I do uh, and of these segments. So uh, let's move on and talk about some of the midweek games. John, uh, obviously the biggest one of the week was Baylor's win over Kansas three in a row in Waco over the Jayhawks four of the past seven uh, against the Jayhawks have gone the bears way. Uh, Really, really good performance from BU. It was great. I mean, that was such a huge game, the the debut of Big Monday for ESPN, you know, for this year. Uh, and the crowd was just terrific. I mean, the crowd gets the game ball for that. Uh, the crowd was great. The student section was great. And did you notice, Curtis, you know, the student section kind of up behind where you were shooting, you know, they're in this normal area, but they spilled over into a couple of other sections, maybe more than that you know, just to fill all the seats of people who couldn't be there at eight o'clock on a Monday night. Um, So I thought the students were just terrific and the crowd overall was great. And that was a big part of uh, the big Baylor win. Um, Our assistant news director, Matt Gebhardt, is a season ticket holder. And he and his wife and his kids were all there. I went and said hi. And he told me, he's like, Curtis, this is the fewest Kansas fans I've ever seen at a Baylor Kansas game at the Farrell Center. Um, And... Yeah, look, we don't have to sit here and beat a dead horse. I've said it before. Do that more Baylor student section. Do yeah. it more. Yeah. Do it uh, every game, right? Right. Um, so huge win for the for the Bears. Five in a row. Kansas has lost three in a row. Trivia time, John. How many? Now, we know how many three game losing streaks Kansas has had under Bill Self. The answer is four. When was the most recent one? Ooh. Um, was it 2020? Is that right? I don't know. You're not far off. It was the 2020, 2021 season, the COVID year. Kansas lost three in a row. And if my memory serves correctly, because my internet is not cooperating on loading the schedule to double check it, but I believe it was Oklahoma state, Baylor, Oklahoma, all on the road. Yeah. Um, and then Kansas obviously finishes second in the conference that season, uh, but then gets bounced in the second round of the NCAA tournament by 34 points to USC. Uh, that was a memorable NCAA tournament for Baylor fans, by the way, because that was the year that Baylor won the national championship. This is true. Um, and and when I said and when I said 2020, I I should have been more uh, direct. 2021 season, so it was that season. It was that season, yeah. Yeah. So Tuesday's results: number ten Texas eighty nine, Oklahoma State seventy five. Kind of ho hum performance for Texas in a, in the best way for the Longhorns. Can we can we say one more thing about Monday before we move on? Or can I say one more thing? Of course. I thought it was great that the students did not rush the floor. Isn't that great? I mean, and, go to the game where Baylor is now. Go to the game expecting Baylor to win. Don't rush the floor. I don't know what scenario now Baylor students should rush the floor. I I think that the program is at a point where, you know, expect to win. Now, Kansas was the higher ranked team for sure. Great respect for Kansas, their history, their tradition, all of that. But this was not a game that uh, the floor deserved to be rushed. So, again, kudos to our students that I don't know if they thought that through or if uh, it just sort of organically didn't happen on Monday night. But I thought that was great. I mean, I thought that was just absolutely a perfect cap for the night that they didn't rush the floor. 
And how many times does a coach have to answer questions about rushing the floor when they don't do it? Scott Drew, uh, John, I don't know. Do <laughs> yeah. And John, I think you might've still been on the air when, the, when the post-game press conference was happening, but um, you know, Scott Drew was asked, Hey, you guys just beat top 10 Kansas. It's your third straight win over a blue, over this particular blue blood program at home. And your students didn't rush the floor. And Scott uh, commented and joked, like, I don't know what it would take to have a rushing of the court anymore. That's true. Yeah. So I agree. He, I thought it was great. I, I thought it was great. I mean, expect to win. That's where the Baylor program is now, which says a lot. You know, if we if we'd won this game over Kansas, well, 2001, when Baylor won on Big Monday here, that deserved a court rushing that yep. night, you know, and there yep. was one. But uh, but it's just, you know, where the programs are right now. And I don't mean that as a slight to Kansas at all. It's not. It's more a compliment to Baylor and Coach Drew and where the Baylor program is. A hundred percent. And it's something that, you know, three in a row at home over Kansas, four out of six, I believe, is what Matt Roberts, the uh, intrepid sports information director for the Bears, uh, told me on Monday night. Um, that's that, that's a huge feat, and you guys have built this program up. Scott Drew giving the students uh, a lot of credit for it, uh, and I'm glad you brought it up because I would definitely have been remiss if I had not uh, done so myself. Let's talk Tuesday. Uh, we okay. can hit these games real quick. Ho a ho-hum performance from number 10, Texas, and I mean that as a compliment to the Longhorns, 89-75 winners over Oklahoma State. Um, John, Texas looks really good. They really do, uh, especially at home. All the home teams won uh, so far this week, uh, except West Virginia. West Virginia won on the road. But uh, it, but Texas uh, doing that to Oklahoma State, and the Cowboys had to be you know feeling pretty good about themselves uh, making that trip. But Texas, you know, they are looking good. They've got to share first place right now. You know, Oklahoma State beats Iowa State at home, which I did not see coming. And then, I mean – it's only a four point difference in losing to Texas in Stillwater versus losing to Texas in Austin because they lost by 10 at home and 14 on the road. Um, this Cowboy team is very up and down. I'm very curious of what it does moving forward. Um, you would have to think, and I hate speculating about things like this, but you have to think that Mike Boynton might, given the history of the Oklahoma State basketball program, might be feeling his seat warm up right now. Um, and I don't mean that as a slight to Mike Boynton. I love, I, I would run through a brick wall just based on the stuff he does on Twitter and people I know who have worked with him, but it's the, it's, you know, the one step forward, two steps back or the two steps forward, one step back, depending on the year. Um, Oklahoma state is going to have to get a road win. Um, if it's going to get into the tournament. Yeah. And I hate talking about things like that. You know, it's people's lives and coaches and, exactly. and coaches and their families talking about that. I don't, I don't like to talk about that, but, but consider, you know, where, where um, just consider the league this year. I think you've got to factor that in and Oklahoma state, that huge win over Iowa state. That was huge. I mean, Iowa state may be the best team in the league right now and Oklahoma state, you know, was uh, knocked them off. So um I, I don't know. I, I just think you factor into everything this year, the league, including Texas Tech now sitting at 0-8 in the conference. You know, you guys just got to factor in how tough this league is top to bottom. You know, and you bring up a good point. And um, that's not alum me talking. That's just kind of from an outsider's perspective, looking at how some of these things operate. Yes, this league, this is the best Big 12 I think we've ever seen. Um, in men's basketball, Oklahoma State takes Kansas to the wire in Lawrence. It beats Iowa State at home, um, and I, it beat West Virginia at home. And it's there's no bad teams in this league. Um, it's it's just yes, uh, the alums are going to be frustrated, but I still think that if we're talking about NCAA tournament resume, you've got to get a road win in this league at least one. Lord knows we might have a 12 and six conference champion this year. The conference oh, yeah. is that loaded. Um, and so curious what Oklahoma state does moving forward. Very uh, interesting game that we'll talk about in a bit on Saturday in their leg of the big 12 sec challenge. Uh, number 12, Iowa state 80, number five, Kansas state 76 Tuesday night. Heck of a win for the cyclones, man. Hilton magic is back. 
Yeah, definitely. They are playing uh, maybe maybe them and Baylor playing the best of any two teams in the league right now. Uh, and that was uh, some kind of win for Iowa State. Take care of uh, home court there, knock off Kansas State. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like Iowa State, they're getting all, all the pieces together, everyone, you know, doing their part and playing together. And you see the results. I mean, they knocked off the highest ranked team in the Big 12 in Kansas State. And it shows how tough it is to win on the road in this league. Uh, John, through the past five games now, I believe road teams only have three wins, and two of them are by the Bears. I think that's right. There was a stretch when uh, in 15 games there were two wins, and both of those were Baylor, but that was going back to Saturday. So, yeah, I think you're right. Um, the Bears with three road wins this year, that's huge. That is huge. And the only other one in that stretch that we're talking about, you mentioned the two and 13 where both were the Bears. Texas at West Virginia last Saturday. That's yeah, the third yeah, one. That's it. Um, number 11, TCU 79, Oklahoma 52. I don't know the math. I would like to think that this is the most lopsided performance so far this conference season, John. <laughs> Um, TCU may own the top two since yeah. they beat Kansas by 23. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and we just saw Baylor just saw Oklahoma last week in Norman last Saturday, and that was a two point game. And Baylor was fortunate to get out of there, you know, with a win. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's one point or two points to, to get a win on the road is huge, but that was a two point game, 62 60. And now here Oklahoma goes on the road and they lose by 17 at TCU. So tell you what, the Frogs, man, they are rolling also. Uh, not 17, 27. Oh, yeah, 27. Thank you like, for the correction. 17 <laughs> is a lot. 27. Yeah, exactly. You're right. 27. <laughs> <laughs> um tcu is good man chuck o'bannon uh really nice off the bounce mike miles is uh his speed is so good um and eddie lampkin is is a force to be reckoned with inside man this tcu team tcu is one of i would say four or five teams in the league right now that is poised and skilled enough to be playing on the second weekend of the ncaa tournament do you agree yes very much so i mean again they've got all the pieces they've got uh you know, every those guys that you mentioned, Mike Miles and Chuck O'Bannon and Eddie Lampkin. I mean, they're all really, really good and really playing well together. And credit, you know, Jamie Dixon for getting these guys and kind of uh, change of styles, isn't it, for Jamie Dixon to allow these guys to get up and down the court and, and score a lot of points. Uh, you know, their offense is really, really good. So uh, I think it, it almost seems like Jamie Dixon is allowing their – team to uh to do what they do best you know and that's just get up and down the court and score a bunch and the results speak for themselves even a 27 point win over Oklahoma I'm just blown away 27 points like I and I don't say I don't I don't say that number to correct you to be to be rude and tell you you're wrong no I say that to per illustrate just how impressive of a win that was even against uh a team that has struggled a little bit in conference play um in Oklahoma let's let's move to Wednesday actually let's go back the last time you mentioned Jamie Dixon letting them cook the last time he had a team that he could just kind of be hands off say adjustments during a dead ball with because I watched him a lot during the first half of that game at Baylor he's not hands on he lets his kids do what they need to do uh and he's he, most of his coaching is done during dead balls quick adjustments and then in the in the locker room the last time he had a team that was that good, John, they were a one seed at Pitt. Now, they Ooh. got upset in the round of 32, but you're talking about a historic feat at a school that since Jamie Dixon left to go back to his alma mater uh, has, has really struggled. And so I think that this TCU team is a, is a wrecking ball come March. Yeah, I think so, too. And, uh, you know, the, the caveat here on all these teams is if they stay healthy. You know, Eddie Lampkin yep. uh, went out part of, was it that game or the game before when he went out with an ankle injury but came back and appears to be okay. But that is always, you know, I'm sure it's in the coach's mind, the back of their mind, we got to stay healthy. It's been a big part of Baylor's turnaround is getting everybody back. 
and having them not just for games, but having everyone for practice, you know, to get the, uh, you know, to get all that timing down and the reps down in practice. So, uh, you know, these teams we're talking about, you know, they got to stay healthy down the stretch. John, I think we need to have a not fun conversation as we turn toward Wednesday night's lone Big 12 game. Final score, West Virginia 76, Texas Tech 61. Would you believe me if you hadn't watched the game and I told you based on that result, Texas Tech actually had a 15 to 5 lead in the first half? Uh, no, shocking. Yes. Uh, shocking that not that they had the lead, but that they lost it in West Virginia on the road, came back to win. So um, that that's tough. I mean, you think about how hungry both those teams are. Uh, West Virginia winning a road game for the first time in, what is it, 100 days, something like that. Something like so, that. So uh, a road conference game, I guess. So, um, you know, both teams very hungry for a win. Credit West Virginia for getting that one on the road. This is the not fun part of the conversation that I think we have to have. I do not see a team in this year's Big 12 going 0-18. Not at all. And I want to be very clear about that. That said, John. I don't like reading schedules. I think it's boring television. Let's read a schedule. At LSU, home for Iowa State, at Baylor, at Oklahoma State, home for K-State, home for Texas, at West Virginia, at Oklahoma, home for TCU, at Kansas, home for Oklahoma State. Show me the win. Show me the one you point at on the schedule and say that is where Texas Tech gets its conference win. Yeah, no, I can't do that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they won any of those, you know, uh, again, right. They Especially in Lubbock games last year, different team. I know a lot of different players, but Mark Adams didn't forget how to coach between last year to this year. So they are, they are going to beat somebody. You're right. I don't know who it is. I couldn't pick it, couldn't predict it, but they're going to beat somebody, maybe more than one, somebody down the road. Uh, Ken Palm has this team projected to win two games between now and the end of the season, Saturday at LSU. Um, which would be their first road win this season. And Sunday, or excuse me, and March 4th at home by one against Oklahoma State in Lubbock. Wow. <laughs> um, I say that not as a knock on Texas Tech. Things happen in basketball. Things happen in sports. Um, the and, and Ken Palm also says chance of winless record 1.6%, talking about its conference slate because it does not have a win. So there is a 98.4% chance that Texas Tech wins a conference game. Okay? Um, sometimes things happen, man, and this conference is so loaded. Um, it doesn't help that none of Tech's non-conference wins are rated – in the top or one of them rather is rated in the top 150 at Ken Pong. And that's Eastern Washington. And in, into last week, Louisiana Tech was the only one was the the only one in the top 150 that Tech had beat in the non-conference. Um, Eastern Washington has played its way up to that point, and uh Louisiana Tech has stumbled a little bit in conference USA play against some decent CUSA teams like North Texas and Florida Atlantic. Um, but it's Things are not going well for, like you said, for the Red Raiders, but it's not, like you said, Mark Adams didn't forget how to coach. This team didn't forget how to play. This team got hurt in the portal when its best player transferred to Kansas. This team got hurt um, with NBA draft prospects. And, you know, this is still a team that played in the Elite Eight. Like, we we have to remember that. Can they get it figured out? Absolutely. When you look at the home schedule, there's there's chances on there. And, I don't think that we come out and we don't, I don't think we come out of the season and see a top 10 team not fall in Lubbock. That happens every season. Um, I just, this is such a different boat for Texas tech to be in um, compared to the last three or so post seasons that we've seen. Um, I don't think tech is in the 2020 NCAA tournament. If it happens, um, unless it beats Texas that morning when everything got shut down, right. As they were warming up. Um, but, Elite Eight in 2022. Uh, in 2021, win a tournament game. 2019, all the way to the national championship game. Elite Eight in 2018. This team is, this program is good in its current state. Look at what ba look at what happened to Baylor in 2018, the 2017-18 season, the NIT year. Things just happen in sports. I'm not sitting here saying Tech is a bad team. I'm saying that I'm using tech as an example to show just how good 
uh, the Big 12 is, I think, yeah. this season. That's what I would say. I agree with you completely there. I mean, if if Tech is the worst team in this league, and right now record-wise they are, then how good is the Big 12, you know? I, I think it really speaks to that, and uh, I hope it shows this weekend, you know? I hope the, the Big 12 really – puts on a show this weekend against the SEC and uh and a lot of people obviously have taken notice of the Big 12 this year but then this would just accelerate that if the league does well this weekend. And I'm glad you said that. Let's let the Segway King carry us into the Big 12 SEC challenge on Saturday with 10 games on the docket. We don't have to spend a lot of time on each particular one. Um Let's start with the first one. Let's go chronologically. Let's go 11 a.m. Central on ESPN from Morgantown, West Virginia, number 15, Auburn at the Mountaineers. Auburn's uh, nation-leading home win streak of 28 games snapped last night at the hands of the fighting Texas Aggies. Uh, Not that that matters when you're going to Morgantown. I think West Virginia's biggest advantage here is being at home, uh, but I think this Auburn team is also really good. Yeah, very much so. Ranked 15th in the nation this week. And, uh, you know, what does that do? How do they rebound from their loss to Texas A&M? You know, are they wobbly a little bit or do they come back strong? So that'll be a, that'll be an interesting way to start the day, won't it, in Morgantown? A hundred percent. Way to start it, right? Uh, yeah. Let's go to the 1 p.m. hour. Uh, three games tipping at one in this tournament, all on the ESPN Family and Networks. Uh, we start with the one that I think yeah. might have blowout potential from Norman, Oklahoma, number two, Alabama, and unranked Oklahoma. Uh, John, this, uh, this, this Alabama team looks like a national championship contender, and this Oklahoma team looks like it might be NIT bound to me. Yeah, and isn't it interesting because, you know, they sort of slot these teams. You know, they slot your opponents for the Big 12 SEC, basically depending on how you did last year. And this slotting looks like, I mean, credit to Alabama, you know, that they're doing as well as they did, although they had a close game last night also, didn't they? They won, but Mm -hmm. I think they had a close game. But, uh, you know, for Alabama to go in there, they we played, Baylor played uh, in Tuscaloosa last year. And, man, that crowd was uh, rabid, and Alabama just played great, and Baylor really wasn't in the game much at all. So they are good. They are really good. A lot of people think maybe the best team in the nation. So that's a tough draw for Oklahoma. Yeah, and and you're 100% right. This is based on last year's results and preseason expectations, and I don't think anyone expected Alabama to be at the level it's at. And like you said, credit to Nate Oates, credit to the Crimson Tide. This is a really good team uh, and a brutal draw for Oklahoma. Um, That is the second game of the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Also in the 1 o'clock hour, this one on ESPN2 from Columbia, Missouri, number 12, Iowa State, and Missouri, a Big 8 rivalry. Um, I like Iowa State's chances, but this Missouri team is really good at home. Yeah, and they're playing better, aren't they? Playing better this year, so uh, that'll be tough, and Iowa State has to go on the road. Uh, This one will be key because, again, Iowa State, uh, one of the co-leaders in the Big 12, So people are going to look at this one and say, all right, this is the best you've got in the Big 12, Iowa State. Let's see how they do against one of the middle teams in the uh, SEC against Missouri, at least the way the standings are right now. Dennis Gates, complete roster overhaul when he gets the job in Como from uh, Cleveland State, and it's worked. I I want to say that they had one loss going into the border war against Kansas, or maybe the Kansas game was their first loss this season. Um, 15-5, and Missouri 4-4 and uh, in the SEC. And it's a good SEC this year, too. So this looks like a tournament team. This is a really good test for Iowa State. Yeah, very much so. So that'll be fun. Uh, Tough that the Cyclones have to go to Columbia. I'm sure there'll be jazz there for that game. So uh, this is one of the, again, this is, they're all really good matchups. This one's really good on Saturday. The final game in the 1 p.m. hour on ESPNU from Kim Mulkey Arena in Baton Rouge is the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the LSU Tigers, two teams that would really like a win here, John. Yeah, very much so. I watched a little bit of LSU in Arkansas on, was that Tuesday night or Wednesday night this week? And uh, LSU looks good. I mean, they look better than their record would indicate. So they are at home on Saturday in Tech. We've already talked about really needs a win both of them really need a win so uh go red raiders on saturday 
Hundred uh, percent. LSU losers to six in a row. Tech has lost eight in a row, all in conference. Um, so you know, if this was a football game, I think we'd call this one an anxiety bowl, a certified yeah. anxiety bowl. Um, but this is uh, a, as good of a. This is a chance for Texas Tech to get the momentum going in the right direction. I think. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It would be huge. It would be huge for them to go on the road and get this win, help the league uh, in the process. It'd really be big for Tech. 3 p.m. from the Farrell Center on ESPN. It is Arkansas and number 17, Baylor. I don't, does Arkansas have Nick Smith? It's five star freshman at this point, or are we just going to assume he's not playing in Waco on Saturday? I don't know. Uh, I've traded a couple of emails with Chuck Barrett, but haven't uh, asked that question yet. So he's been out for a while, right? I, I don't know the prognosis. Um, you know, if he could, if he could stay out one more weekend, I think we'd be fine with that. <laughs> He, um, you know, there is some chatter in college basketball that he won't play the rest of the season. Yeah. And I don't know how much I buy into that. Um, he is a projected lottery pick in the NBA draft. He, he does have representation that is known for being pro player and trying to avoid those types of injuries. Um, the, But he is Arkansas's best player. And I think if he can go, he would want to go. I think if he can go, Eric Musselman would like for him to go. Um, I like Baylor in this game. I think I think it's closer than people are expecting. I think the way Arkansas can play, even without Nick Smith, Nick Smith's a difference maker for the Razorbacks, but this Razorback team can make things close uh, regardless of whether he's there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah they're very dangerous. They're very good. Uh, they've dropped out of the top 25 just this week, rematch of the Elite Eight from a couple of years ago. So it, it'll be really tough. And, again, it's sold out in the Farrell Center. So I think our crowd will have a chance to really uh, push on, push the Bears on on Saturday. Also, 3 p.m. number 11 TCU at Mississippi State on ESPN two. Um, you know, we talk about what you did last year in expectations. I think TCU rolls in this one. I think they, I think they're a heavy favorite. I do too. I don't know a lot about Mississippi State, but uh, just like the way TCU is playing, so I'd take the Frogs there for sure. 5 p.m. It is the the marquee matchup of this year's Big 12 SEC Challenge on ESPN from Thompson Bowling Arena. It's number 10 Texas at number four Tennessee. This Tennessee team is really, really good, but so is this Texas team. Yeah, what a great matchup. And that's on right after our game at three o'clock. So I'd like to see some of this battle of uh, oranges. You know, which shade of orange is going <laughs> to get that? Rick Barnes, you know, matched up against his former school. You think Rick Barnes is getting tired of that? You know, he'd like to play somebody else besides Texas. He has um, to do the, but, I'm not salty that I got fired by this school twice yeah, in a yeah. row. Yeah. <laughs> but, man, it's a great matchup. That should be a great game on Saturday. Also 5 p.m. We're flying through. I've got the uh, the countdown going in the Zoom recording now. Also 5 p.m. on ESPN2, Florida at number five, Kansas State. The storyline in this one, John, Keontae Johnson against his former team after collapsing on the floor playing for Florida. I'm excited to see what Keontae Johnson can do in this game. But don't you think, I mean, Florida folks, don't you think they're kind of pulling for him? You know, oh, not, not oh, absolutely. a traitor for leaving or anything like that. I think it's one of those where they hope he has 25 points and Florida wins. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be perfect, yeah. But I don't think they that he's public enemy number one for no. Florida fans. I don't think so. Uh, 7 p.m. from Lexington, Kentucky on ESPN, number nine, Kansas, and the Kentucky Wildcats. Can Kansas get the get the uh, the train move in the right direction against a struggling Kentucky team? Kentucky's been playing better lately. I mean, they uh, they have a win over Tennessee in the last couple of weeks, and they're playing better. Uh, gosh, that'd be huge. Uh, this is sort of – you know, the the best game of the day really is Tennessee and Texas, but this is sort of the marquee game just because of the blue blood nature of uh, the two winningest programs in college basketball history. So uh, I hope Kansas can get the win, if they can win the, in that losing streak, you know, at three straight. And that would be a big, big coup for the league for KU to win over UK. Get those acronyms right. Uh, cause th these fans for both of these schools will let you know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, 7 PM Saturday, the final game of the day. It is Ole Miss at Oklahoma state on ESPN two Ole Miss one and four on the road, Oklahoma state eight and two at home. I think that's the key in this one. 
I think you're right. Home court, Gallagher Iba for Oklahoma State. I hope they cap the day with a big win. Let's run through the women's schedule real quick. Uh, Baylor gets uh, the week, the midweek off. Um, remember, the conference schedules are simultaneous to one another, kind of running concurrent to each other. The difference is the women's Big 12 SEC Challenge is played in December. The men's is at the end of January. So the, everybody gets a either a midweek or a weekend off at some point. Um, but Saturday's slate, four games, it is West Virginia at TCU at one, all-time central. Uh, Baylor at Texas Tech at two, Oklahoma at Iowa State at three, and Oklahoma State at Texas at seven. Um, John, I think this is a chance to get Baylor going back the right direction. Yeah, very much so. I think a week of practice is good. Get a little extra rest, work on what you need to work on. So uh, I, I'm excited to see how Nikki Collin and the Bears do out in Lubbock. And then Sunday's game on ESPNU, 5 p.m. Central, is the Sunflower Showdown in Lawrence. It is K-State and Kansas, a team that was ranked last year and a team that was ranked this year. Um, this would be a good chance for Kansas to get going back the right direction again um, after falling out of the top 25 recently. Yeah, very much so. And uh, always a good matchup, one of those, you know, throw out the records when it's the battle of the in-state schools. Let's hit the diamond before we go. Uh, the softball and baseball preseason polls are out. Let's hit the softball one real quick as my timer says we have five minutes left on this recording. Um, in softball, there's seven teams in the Big 12. Kansas picks seventh, Texas Tech sixth, Iowa State fifth, Baylor fourth. The first three all in the top 15 of the preseason polls. Texas third, Oklahoma State picked second, and Oklahoma is picked first. Um, I, I think what this says is that Baylor's a projected tournament team, according to the Big 12 coaches. I think you're right. I, I saw that, and I was pleasantly surprised. I don't know where I thought Baylor would be in the fall, but I think that's uh, that's good. A little show of respect there for uh, Coach Moore and Baylor softball. So being picked fourth, I think if you finish fourth, I think you'll, uh, you'll be in the NCAA tournament. I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, this is a team that returns a lot of experience from the uh, softball equivalent to the NIT last year. I can't remember the name of the tournament, um, but you know, Baylor goes to Colorado for the postseason, wins that tournament and brings a lot of those pieces back, brings in a couple of key freshmen, a couple of key transfers, Glenn Moore, very high on this team um, moving in to the year. Also, the baseball preseason poll. And this is the one that I want to spend a little bit more time on as we've, we're down to about four minutes. Uh, number nine, these are the uh, coaches' picks in the Big 12. Baylor picked ninth out of nine. Kansas eighth, K-State seven, uh, West Virginia six, Oklahoma five, Texas four, Texas Tech three, Oklahoma State two, TCU one. Oklahoma State is the highest ranked team according to D1Baseball.com in the, in the Big 12 heading into the postseason. John, are you surprised Baylor is picked that low? Not surprised. Because that's, you know, what the outsiders have to go on is, you know, who's coming back, coaching change, a lot of new, a lot of changes here at Baylor. So I am really not surprised you pick ninth. And, you know, it, it's not all bad, you know, because, uh, you know, Baylor does some good things this year. They exceed expectations easily. So uh, to answer your question, not really surprised. But I'll say this, I don't think Baylor baseball finishes ninth this year. And all, very rarely does the team pick ninth in this preseason poll miss the Big 12 tournament. Um, I'm curious about where, you know, there's a lot of new coaches in this conference. Kansas has a new coach this year after their longtime head coach stepped down at the end of the season. They missed the Big 12 tournament last year. Um, I think this is a really loaded Big 12 in baseball. And, I, you know, Mitch Thompson, I've talked a lot with him when he was at MCC. If there is one coach that I have faith to – blow people away in year one. Do I think Baylor makes the NCAA tournament? No. Do I think that they make the Big 12 tournament? Absolutely. And I think that Mitch Thompson can get this going in the right direction. They are young this year, but Mitch is just a very good baseball coach. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. I mean, he's a really good coach. He's got a really good staff. You know, it's amazing when you look at this staff and know their backgrounds and what they left to come here to be a part of Mitch's staff, uh, you know, it says a lot about Mitch right there. So uh, I think these are really good baseball guys. And, um, you know, who, who knows about the talent level? We don't know right now about the talent level for Baylor. They're going to be coached really well. 
And uh, if we can get some people out there at the Baylor ballpark to support them, I think they're going to be or surprise a lot of people this season. Have some fun the final 90 seconds. John, you and I both get to check a new arena off our uh, college basketball bucket list on Monday. You excited to go to the Moody Center? Yeah, a new one. I uh, don't know where we park down there. Got to find that out and find how to get into the building. But looking forward to seeing it. I've watched some games on TV and looking forward to being there on Monday. It looks like a fun atmosphere. That'll be a huge big Monday game. You know, two teams that are probably going to be in the top 15 at that point. Um, and, you know, a, a rivalry game uh, and a historic one at that. So uh, a lot of fun to be had Monday. John, I will see you there. And thank you guys so much for joining us on this week's Big 12 Breakdown. John, enjoy the week and enjoy the show. You've got uh, the broadcast on Saturday. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate it. We'll see you all soon on the Big 12 Breakdown.